Welcome to my channel, Pen to Paper. I'm Leah Lindemann, author of the Canadian Reminiscence series, and thank you so much for stopping by today. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. As you've heard, or maybe you've heard in previous announcement that I made on my channel at the beginning of April, is that I'm launching a little bit into booktubing. And so this video is actually a book tag that I'm doing thanks to Lucy from Books and Brushes. Uh, Lucy and I have been becoming good friends over um, Instagram and our channels and we actually just recently did a discussion that relates to this tag today. I am doing the Grishaverse tag which has to do with the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology and thanks to Lucy who did this tag ahead of me, I tagged myself and um, I'm going to be doing this tag today. And we also even did a Instagram live discussion on the show versus the book. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, that is on my Instagram uh, handle. So you can find that there. And I highly suggest you go and subscribe to Lucy's channel at Books and Brushes. She is just such a wonderful person, very sweet, love, I love her zest for books and she's just great. So go over there and show her the love by subscribing and checking out her videos. This tag was originally done by Rebecca Books. I think Lucy said it was done about two years ago, so we're kind of late on the bandwagon, but here we go. So the first prompt is Kaz Brecker and it's a book that you shouldn't judge by its cover. Now I had a really difficult time with this one because I think all the books that I've read from what I've seen, none of the covers have been like weird or um, like ugly <laughs> or just didn't seem interesting. So I haven't come across a book that way yet, but I was looking through my Goodreads and all from all the list of books that I've read in the past years. And there's one book that I have as a hard copy. So it's a leather bound hard copy edition from the 19, oh, early 1900s. Um, but on Goodreads, it has this really weird kind of crappy cover. So that's the one I chose and it's called Graustark. It's a love story behind the throne. I remember reading this book. Actually, my mom picked up this book for me from a vintage store somewhere in the Laurentians north of Montreal and she bought this book for me and it's been on actually a lot of these books that you see here on my shelves have come from that vintage store or that I may have found at other vintage stores but anyways I decided to pick it up I loved it it was such a I don't even remember, remember the details it's been a long time ago since I read this book but I just remember loving it for the pure it was just pure joy and it wasn't the most amazingly written book but I really just enjoyed the adventure. It just kind of felt like a good old fashioned princess bride story. And it not really like princess bride, but just that feeling that, you know, the, the guy falls in love with the girl and there's some action, there's some adventure and just very joyful. Nina, Goodness, I forgot her last name. And it's a book that makes you feel empowered. I chose High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. And yes, it's a nonfiction book, but it's a book that I read last year and I'm actually not rereading it, but I'm listening to it in audiobook form this year. And it's a book that helps you put structure and systems in your life that gear you toward that gear you toward having high performance habits in your mental health, your emotional health, and your spiritual health. I gave that one a five stars. I loved it so much. And it's one that I think I will reread or listen to the audiobook every year because it just helps keep me in track for my own life. The third prompt is Inej. It's a book that has a good balance of character and plot. I chose one that I'm sure very few of you have heard. It's called Ishmael by Eden Southworth, and she was an author from the late 1800s, so a Victorian novelist. And this one I found through a company called the Lamplighter Series, or the Lamplighter Company, that kind of repackaged books in beautiful leather hardback form from that time period that is not very well known today. And Ishmael 
is the story of this young boy. It's basically a story about his life, but I remember it's actually one of my favorite books and I haven't read it for a while again, but it's one that's always made an impression on me and that's one that I find had a lot of character growth in it, but as well had a good plot turns. The next prompt is Alina, a unique read, a book that you have never read before. Sorry. A book that is unlike anything you've read before. And for this, I chose the Reader series by Tracy Chi. It's a young adult series, but specifically the third book. And what's really cool about this series, if you love books, you have to read this series. It's a girl. Let me see here. Let me get this story straight. It's a girl who teaches, who lives in a society where nobody reads and writes. But her mother and father knew, and so they began teaching her at a young age, but when all her family is taken away from her and she's on her own, um, she actually teaches herself to read and write, but words have power. They are magical in this world. And as the series develops, there's a point in the third book called The Storyteller where it was the most amazing experience I've had reading a book. I've never read anything like it where you as a reader are completely and personally entwined with this character in such a way that was so mind-boggling. And when I read it, I had this aha moment and I couldn't get over it for a solid day, even longer. It just haunted me. So this is a must. If you love books and words that have magic in a fantasy world, this is a read for you. The next prompt is Mal, a book that sticks with you. This was really difficult because a lot of books stick with me. Yeah, there's like, I would say there's more than five, <laughs> even more. I would say there's a good 20 books that have always stuck with me throughout my life. I mean, you know, especially when I first became a, a heavy reader around grade three with the Chronicles of Narnia series and Nancy Drew Mysteries, like all those books have stuck with me. And even my earliest historical fiction romances, those are all books that I remember and smile back on with joy in my heart. But I'm going to pick one that was actually the first book that made me cry. And it's I find it's very difficult to make me cry either in movies or books, but this book did it. And it was Bridge to Terabithia. We had to read this in grade six with our class, and I remember getting to the end, bawling my eyes out because, well, I don't know, should I spoil it? A character dies. And I remember being so sad and it's always stuck with me that that was the first book that made me cry. Um, so that is a middle grade read, I would say. And they did do a movie about it many, many years ago, but definitely read the book. It's worth it. The next prompt is The Darkling, a book that has a dark plot or storyline. And for this one, I chose, this was a little difficult because I tend to not read books that are very dark. I've read books with a lot of sensitive issues or, or, um, yeah, but I don't tend to read I don't know, dark? When I think dark, I think of the fold. <laughs> but I don't tend to read many books with that kind of heavy feeling. So for this one, I chose City of the Lost by Kelly Armstrong. This was a book that I read a couple years ago, and I actually heard Kelly, the author, speak on her book. Our local county libraries, they hosted her coming to talk about her book. So that book... I chose it because it's dark in the way that it's about a woman whose friend's fiance is hunting them. And so there's this place that they could go to, I think it's in Alaska, where it's called the city of the lost because people are chosen to go to the city who are being hunted or killed or they are criminals and they're given a completely brand new life, but there's no TV, no cell phones, no internet. It's just this one little community 
that lives together. And she's a detective. And she is brought there to that city with her friend to escape her friend's um, abusive fiance. And there she finds a very, very dark mystery waiting for her. And I just remember the whole feeling of the book have being dark. Just, you know how when you read a book, you get a general sense of a feeling about it? Well, that's how I would have summed up this book. The next prompt is Jesper, a book that people always seem to leave out. And I picked, I knew which one I was going to pick right away. And it's Persuasion by Jane Austen. And I just uh, met Andrea Janelle from Andrea Janelle Reads and uh, through Nikki from Dark Between Pages. And she and I are kindred spirits in that we find Persuasion by Jane Austen is never talked about by Austen fans, and it frustrates me. Persuasion is, in my opinion, Jane Austen's best work. I've read Pride and Prejudice. I've read uh, Sense and Sensibility. I've read many of her works, but Persuasion just has that sweet note that the others don't ring with. Um, I mean, I give all of Jane Austen's works five stars. I love all of her stuff. But Persuasion is so rich and deep. And every time you read it, there's something new to figure out or to find or to think about. And so when Andrea from Janelle, uh, sorry, when Andrea from Andrea Janelle Reed said the same thing, I knew we were kindred spirits hands down. So that is the one that I say, if you love Austin, you love Regency era stuff, please read Persuasion and tell me what you think. Are you, do you agree with me or do you prefer one of Austin's other books? But even like amongst my own, um, my own, <laughs> my own friends who love Jane Austen, it's always Pride and Prejudice or Sense of Sensibility or Emma, which they're great, but Come on, guys, you got to give Persuasion the love. It is so, so good. So let's, you know, prop it up a little bit and <laughs> make sure that it is known and it is read as well as the others. By the way, go ahead. I mentioned Andrea from Andrea Janelle Reads and also Nikki from Dark Between Pages. Please also go to their Instagram handles. And I know Nikki has a YouTube channel. I'm not sure about Andrea. Maybe she does. I haven't checked it out yet, but go to Instagram, follow them. They are great book reviewers. The next prompt is Wylan, a book that isn't as it seems. I've come across very few books that marketed themselves as something and then were something else. And I had a really difficult time finding one, but I finally found one and it's um Sophia Princess Among Beasts by James Patterson and the way that it marketed itself almost like a high fantasy you know ad adventure ridden uh story adventure f a full of adventure story and yet it was really bland confusing the characters were completely all over the place it just really disappointed and really didn't meet the expectations that I had as it was marketed. I would say don't even read it. I gave it a two stars, which means I don't really like it, but there you have it. And for Matthias, we have a book that started out bad but ended up becoming better toward the end. I don't think I've ever really read a book that was bad at the beginning because then I would have a hard time finishing it. There's only one book that I haven't finished. I'll save that for a DNF tag at some point. But I've had that in series where the first book was okay and then the second and third books were much better. But yeah, it was difficult to find a book that I just kind of plowed through. So when was it? About uh, three years ago as I was in labor for my fifth child. Uh, I had this book in my hands that I was reading and I just very found it very difficult to get through the first 10 chapters. It just was boring, not much to it. This book is, um, oh yes, it's A Tapestry of Hope by Tracy Peterson. And, and then after when I had to put the book down because I actually had to go into labor, then I didn't pick it up again for, I'd say, another 
year and then I picked it up and again I had that same feeling if it wasn't really that interesting but I just pushed myself through it and it did get better toward the end it was more engaging and I could see more character growth throughout it and that is a Christian fiction by the way so yeah but other at any other books I've either found like there was just enough to get me through the book and it was just an okay book or as I said that one book that I DNF'd and the last prompt is Nikolai which I don't even know that character because I haven't read Sie Siege and Storm yet from the Shadow Trilogy which I will get into maybe in July but uh yeah so I haven't met Nikolai yet but I've heard from friends and from other people who read the books that he is a very witty character so for this prompt you have to find a witty book again there are very few books that I would say are witty but I did choose and I have the book here I chose Animal Farm by George Orwell I don't know if you would call it witty I know it's a very sarcastic take on communism right or the soviet revolution uh, yeah it's it it's a sarcastic take on the soviet revolution and how it shows that the pigs have you know um the pigs have told the animals that they must revolt against the human but in the end the pigs end up becoming the human masters or becoming very much like the human masters look how short it is it's super short but it was very insightful, very engaging, and I think I would say this is the wittiest book that I've read that would come close to being witty. So there you have it. There is the Grisha verse tag. Um, if you are watching this and I do not tag you, please feel free to go ahead and tag yourself and do that. Um, but I am going to tag Nikki from Dark Between Pages. I had so much fun doing this and sharing this with you guys. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and hit the subscribe bell down below. Enjoy your week. Have a safe and beautiful week. And I hope to see you next week.